when I was living stealth and I came out as a proud trans woman and I started writing about my story, I was like, I need to make some extra money. A friend of a friend said, I know this restaurant served that's hiring. So I applied and met Lisa. Then I started working there. And then like three months later, the cameras started coming in. Do you feel that your representation on the show has been true to your experience as Billy Lee? I mean, I think it highlights the negative parts of Billy Lee. <laughs> Feel better, and it's hey, pathetic. Come on, come on. Come on. I'm the only trans person, and you know, we just filmed the reunion. I'm looking around, besides Andy, the people on my show, there's not one LGBT person, and there's not one person of color. Vanderpump, it's a reflection of what's going on in America. So I'm here in Los Angeles to meet with Billie Lee. She's a transgender woman, an activist, and a reality TV series star who recently joined the cast of Vanderpump Rules. Her introduction to one of the nation's most popular reality TV shows was a significant moment in transgender representation, bringing her to a mainstream audience as one of the most visible trans women in the United States. It's one of my favorite shows, so I was really excited when Billie joined. I wanted to know how this surreal industry of reality television would handle the complex, nuanced narratives that often come with transgender people. Hello. Hello. Hi. Oh my it's so God. Good to meet you. you too. Come in. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. Come in. So cute. Everyone has a poster board of themselves like this. First of all, it was like hiding in my room. I don't normally have it. Love it here. Thanks. My friends Tom and Ariana lived right here in this building behind oh, me. From the show. Yeah. Are you guys close? Yeah, we're actually really close. Well, that's cool. I mean, it's good that you have people who support you yeah. and are real friends because I feel like the show does feel so real. You're really working there. You're actually friends. And it's hard because sometimes you are scheduled. It's work. You're scheduled with people you don't get along with. Right. Did you expect that you were going to find yourself as like one of the more visible trans women in America? Because so many millions of people watch Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. Like, it's not a niche show. It's been a challenge for me to be visible because I really do appreciate my privacy and I appreciate my alone time. It's also not having control over like, you can live your life, but then you have no control how people edit it and how people view you. So right. to learn how to let go of that and surrender. We're really good as a team on this. That makes yes. a lot of <laughs> That makes a lot of sense. I feel like those are a little short, I'm sorry. No, okay, what we're gonna do is we'll do this one this height so it'll go down like that. You are Los Angeles. <laughs> You're like bronze. I am so LA. When I go home to Indiana, my family's like, I can't understand you because you sound so LA. I'm like, my <laughs> <"Hi>, bad. <laughs> I'm from a very small town in Indiana uh -huh. um, called West Terre Haute. My parents did their best. They had me when they were 16, 17. Oh, wow. It was challenging growing up because they just forced me to be a boy because they were trying to protect me. Sure. Now they're like my biggest fans. Oh, really? Yeah. I moved to Los Angeles. I just loved expressing my feminine energy, but I never heard the word trans. I never understood being transgender. I was just misdiagnosed as being gay. I was at a local small bar in West Hollywood and some guy, he was drunk, I was drunk. I told him my story and he's like, sweetie, you're a trans, you're transgender. And like something just clicked. I couldn't stop thinking about it. It was like I was falling in love with myself for the first time. And so I decided to start hormones. Yeah, and I was, I believe, 20, 21. When I was first transitioning, it was impossible for me to get a job and I was constantly rejected. Sex work was my only option and I felt like I was forced by society to transform like this in a way. And then as soon as I to did... To become acceptable to become in their accepted. eyes. And then as soon as I did transition and was attractive, the red carpet rolled out. Opportunities. When I did have the surgeries and I finally was able to like just be myself and no one noticed. I was living stealth for a couple years. That's a different, a totally different lifestyle than the one that you're living now. Yeah. I lived as a cis woman and I owned a restaurant and I didn't tell anyone. And I was dating a guy, he came home one day mm -hmm. and he said, 
oh, I had the weirdest experience today. And I said, what? And he said, I had to sit next to a trans woman on the bus. And I like, she got close to me. And part of me, like, I was just shaking. Like, I wanted to just throw her across the bus. And I was like, oh, my God. And I, I didn't want to tell him in that moment because I was afraid. But I was like, I can't do this anymore. Is living your life openly and proudly a way to try and change that? Oh, for sure. The mission is for every person to be able to be who they are. You know, when I was living stealth, I had this sense of freedom and safety. And everyone should feel that way, and they shouldn't have to be stealth to do it. To help me get a better sense of her real life, Billy introduced me to her makeup artist, Ko, who also happens to be her best friend from Indiana. I've never been to a place like this. This is so cute. Have a seat. Take off your shoes. She's a little baby. So how long have you guys known each other? Oh, God. Um, I say 15 years, but I feel like it's been longer. But we met in Indiana at Steak and Shake. It was a 24-hour spot. Yeah. And it was like steak burgers and shakes. I was like a very like goody two shoes and then I met this bitch and <laughs> she was like, let's see out and get drunk and let's party, let's do this and do that. And before I knew it, I was like arriving late to work. I got her fired. She got me fired. Yeah. I was like, it was just a mess. Well, you guys have been through a lot together, right? You transitioned together. Yeah, that we was did. crazy. Yeah. So to go from that, you know, and to be here today, what have you seen since Billy started working with Vanderpump Rules? How have you seen that impact her? There's good and bad. It really hurts me when I see that my sister is like going through this like real life situation. I just try to be a support system and be open and loving and be there when she needs me, you know? I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for her and for my support group. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I love you. I love you. Yeah. So like the big turning point in your narrative where you actually started being featured more in certain episodes this season happened around an incident which has become known as Girls' Night. Yes. Most of the cast members on Vanderpump Rules have storylines about relationships, sex, and partying. Billy's narrative, however, was largely connected to a women's event at Sur that she appeared to have been excluded from, called Girls' Night. Girl, you did not include me in any of this. I've been rejected my entire life and not be able to go to girls' things, and then my it's not about that. Entire... Suddenly, Billy's story was reduced to a hostile argument about gender identity, cis privilege, and transphobia that played out on national television and on mainstream social media. I tweeted how rude and not cool it was to have a girls' night and not include the only trans woman at the workplace. It brought me back to when I was a child where I wasn't included in the girls' soccer team. I wasn't included in the girls' pizza night or the girls' locker room. It was public. It was all out there for people to see and comment. One wrote, you pull the trans card much too often. I only remember doing it once, but another one. People bash you because you are a terrible person, thirsty for screen time. You are the hater, Billy, such a confused individual full of hate and rage. You don't belong on the show. I'm sorry, but your crying was hilarious. <sighs> I do wish I handled that situation better, but it was a really big trigger for me. And then as an activist, I was just disappointed in how everything was handled. You put it out there that people are transphobic when Lisa... I never said the word transphobic. OK, Experience. that is it for me. It wasn't about the trans woman not being included anymore. It was about the cis women being, quote unquote, accused of being transphobic. I never wrote it. I never said it. I liked tons of comments that day, depressed, upset, sad, of people reaching out to me with support, also saying, I deal with transphobic things at work. I deal with not being included at school. I was liking comments, letting them know, like, I'm here. Thank you for being here for me. I hear you. I never once said they were transphobic. And I've said over and over, I think it comes from being ignorant, and I think it comes from being self-involved. I'd heard from Billy about her experience within the sensational world of reality television, 
but I also wanted to get another perspective. So I sat down with Ariana, a longtime leading cast member on Vanderpump Rules. It blew up, it blew up on social media. And I think the unfortunate thing about that is that none of those people on social media know us really, truly. They don't know her, truly. And they don't really know the situation. There were a lot of transphobic comments being made towards Billy during that time. You know, some people saying like, well, you weren't clued because you're not a real girl. Things like that right. that are so triggering and so hurtful that aren't coming from the person she's even arguing with. They're coming from a stranger in Timbuktu. And it seems like that's something you sign up for when you're going on reality TV. Right. I think that we're getting better. I think that there are some roadblocks. If we can take a second and think about Billy's perspective, think about Billy's history in her life and each other, then I think that Maybe it would be the death of reality TV, but it would be a beginning of a beautiful life so You'd together. kill the show, but you'd change the world. <laughs> right, it's like, I would love to think that we don't have to choose between the two. I would love to think that we can have both. Should I do a little bit of my bronzer? I always get like nervous before hosting a big brunch because it's like, will there be enough people? I just want everyone to have a good time. Well, you know, everything's gonna work out, like you just have to breathe. It's such a celebration, there's just no need to stress. Yeah. At all. So we're here outside of Sur, where much of Vanderpump Rules is shot. Billy puts on a brunch here on Sundays. This one, though, is particularly special. She's invited transgender people from across Los Angeles to come and experience this day free of charge to honor her community outside of the show. used to own a cafe in Sherman Oaks called Sundara, and I was one of her first hires. Oh, okay, cool. So that was during the time in her life when she wasn't even publicly out as transgender. She was living south. Yeah, yeah, she was. Ironically, I didn't even know, for the first couple months that I knew her, I had no idea. Right. Since the day I met Billy, she's a beautiful soul, amazing, caring, deep person. She gives me so much energy and so much confidence in myself. Like, she teaches me how to be a better woman. Woo! God, mate. It's like yeah, having heels on out here is like a death trap. Welcome to Brunch with Billy. I want to thank Flux for hosting this with me. It's a dream come true. I remember when I first Billy Lee's platform out. is super important of bridging the trans community with mainstream community and just showing our humanity. I have to say, there are people in here that gave me a job when I couldn't get a job, and then years later, their own child becomes trans, and I think it's At the end of the day, the trans people in America are suffering. I mean, our unemployment rate is three times higher than the general population. And the last thing I want is someone to be like, I don't want to hire a trans person because they're going to be like Billy at work. My whole mission is to be visible so we can show that we are worthy of a relationship and of love and of a job. It's such a magical experience to see everyone here in community where we get to celebrate each other. So thank you, Flux. Thank you, everyone. If we could all raise our glasses and cheers to a wonderful community. Namaste all the way. Brunch with Billy. <laughs>